the early 2000s, Jay-Z brought a couple of athletes into his tight inner circle, one being former NFL running back Larry Johnson. They were thick as thieves. Whenever you saw Jay-Z, Larry wasn't too far behind. They were the real Bonnie and Clyde. Their friendship eventually evolved into a business partnership, but sadly, as their lives went in different directions, Jay-Z turned his back on his right-hand man. Rock bottom is almost losing custody of your daughter, not coming home at night, don't know where you are. It was kind of let life drag me along and hopefully somebody would put me out of my misery. Before we go ape, be sure to scoop up something to munch on at rrgsnacks.com, our online concession stand that has an assortment of beef and bacon jerky and three-wheel motion popcorn. One thing about RRG, we're always going to give you a good backstory. And this one starts on November 19, 1979, when Larry was born to Christine and Larry Sr. in Maryland. His dad was a well-known and well-liked high school football coach during the time Larry played youth football. Larry's goal on the field was to always make his dad proud. At the age of nine, he caught the ball on a kickoff return and made a beeline for the sideline. Out of nowhere, an opponent crashed into him, spinning his helmet sideways. And it was like a white light, and that was it. I, I laid out on the field. They tried to get me to go back in the game. I said, I don't want to go back in the game. Larry told the Washington Post that when he got up, he was dizzy and had no idea where he was. He spent the remainder of the game on the sideline with an intense headache. There were no protocols in place to make sure he was okay, and Larry wasn't worried about that His dad anyway. was watching from the bleachers, and all Larry could think about was how he let his dad down. And people would think he was too soft. Larry told the Post, I didn't know how to redeem myself. Looking back on the incident, Larry suspects that, although he wasn't formally diagnosed, that incident was the first of many concussions. He went harder than ever in his family's basement, studying NFL footage and looking for ways to prove his toughness. By the time he entered middle school, he took things a step further by researching his opponents to find out which ones came from broken homes. He would then taunt those players on the field to get into their heads and throw them off their game. He wasn't the best on the field. However, he had the desire to learn as much as he could about the game, which made him an asset to the team. Eventually, coaches noticed he was exhibiting behavioral issues. According to the Washington Post, whenever he was benched, he would blow up at his coaches, and if a teammate or an opponent challenged him, he'd hit them with a cheap shot. He received a scholarship to Penn State, where his dad was working as the school's assistant football coach. During his undergrad years, Larry found himself in the back seat of police cars, and it wasn't uncommon for him to be pulled into disciplinary meetings with the coaching staff. While he still had the desire to make his dad proud, his underlying desire to prove his toughness led him to get into altercations with both men and women. According to the Washington Post, Larry began experiencing symptoms of depression in college, but he didn't seek treatment. Instead, he numbed himself with alcohol, which took him deeper into a dark place. He was the 27th pick of the 2003 NFL Draft and joined the Kansas City Chiefs. That same year, he was charged with aggravated assault and misdemeanor battery after he was accused of brandishing a weapon during an argument with a former girlfriend. The charges were dropped after he completed a domestic violence diversion program. During the 2005 offseason, Larry grew more disappointed with his endorsement deal with Nike. He wanted to model for them, but they weren't featuring him in their ads. He also wasn't pleased that they only gave him a $1,000 spending limit at their stores. So he ended his endorsement contract and signed with Team Rock, which was the parent company of Jay-Z's Rockaware apparel line at the time. Larry was the first athlete to sign on with the company, and they immediately put him in their full-page ad in Men's Fitness magazine. More national ads followed, and Team Rock had plans to put Larry in music videos as well. He started spending more time with Jay-Z, and they were photographed in the heart of every city, partying at nightclubs and at red carpet events. Larry told a Kansas City newspaper that Jay-Z kept a small group of confidants that included him and LeBron James. Larry added, It's a real tight group. It goes beyond me just wearing clothes. We've become friends now. 
Larry admired Jay-Z's business sense and decided his end goal was to be just like him by creating his own clothing and accessories line. Larry also had the desire to start a marketing business for musicians and sports figures and possibly open a chain of jazz clubs across the U.S. By 2007, 27-year-old Larry had signed a five-year extension with the Chiefs for an estimated $43.2 million. Despite the dough rolling in, some peculiar rumors emerged. An anonymous woman who worked at Trump Tower told Bossup website that Jay-Z and Larry not only co-owned one of the apartments in the building, but they also lived in it together as well. Allegedly. And get this, despite being in a long-term relationship with Beyonce, the woman stated she had never seen Beyonce in the building. The fact that Larry and Jay were both successful public figures at the time led many people to believe that the rumor was all cap. Why the hell would two millionaires need to shack up together and go half on a mortgage? Hmm. But then, a sports writer out of Philly named Paul Domowich confirmed the rumors in an article. According to another blog, Paul wrote, Johnson, who owns a home in New York with rapper Jay-Z, showed up in Kansas City Sunday for the first time since the team began its voluntary workouts. Welp. In 2007, Larry played Fantasia Barino's love interest in the music video for her song, When I See You. Larry told a Kansas City news outlet that Jay-Z cussed him out after he filmed the music video. Wait, what? Larry confirmed that Jay-Z told him, The less things you do, the more people will have interest in you. The more things you do, you water down your value. On the flip side, Jay-Z gave Larry the OK to appear in his Rock Boys music video, though. After close to 10 years of dating, Beyonce and Jay-Z became husband and wife in 2008. While Jay-Z was enjoying married life, Larry's life began to spiral out of control. Some nights he would fire weapons into strangers' lawns, or he would challenge people to fights just to prove his toughness. He had a me-against-everybody mentality. His aggression earned him a spot on football highlight reels, but it got to the point where he was unable to turn the aggression off when he left the field. The same year Beyonce and Jay-Z got married, Larry was accused of pushing a woman's head at a night spot. Months later, he was accused of spitting his drink on a woman and threatening to take her boyfriend's life. In 2009, he was sentenced to two years probation after pleading guilty to two separate charges involving two women at Kansas City nightclubs. And that same year, he was banned from all Kansas City Chiefs activities for calling a Twitter user a gay slur and for making disparaging comments about the head coach. In 2009, the day he was due back from serving another suspension, the Chiefs released him from his contract. He joined with the Cincinnati Bengals before signing with the Washington Redskins in 2010 for a three-year, $12 million contract. Unfortunately for Larry, he was released from the Redskins six months later. Sometime around 2010, he welcomed a daughter named Jalen. He told the Washington Post, My greatest fear is my daughter falling in love with somebody who's me. That same year, he was spotted on vacation with R&B singer Maya, who had previously teamed up with Jay-Z on the Best of Me remix. Although they didn't confirm their relationship at the time, Larry later told the Washington Post that he was experiencing mental issues during their relationship, and Maya once had to stop him from jumping out of a window. Larry found another team to join in 2011 when he signed with the Miami Dolphins. But after being on the squad for less than two weeks, he was cut from the roster and hasn't played in an NFL game ever since. In October 2012, Larry was arrested on the Las Vegas Strip after an ex-girlfriend told police he put his hands around her neck and left her lying unconscious in a hotel hallway. His felony charges were dropped and he escaped any severe punishment. Without any NFL teams calling his phone, Larry looked for employment elsewhere. He told the Washington Post he was turned down for a job stocking shelves at a store and had to resort to selling bootleg makeup kits on South Beach. According to TMZ, by October 2013, he was working as a DJ at a Miami-area gentleman's club called Tootsie's Cabaret. When he wasn't working, he was frequently spotted chugging tequila at nightclubs and dropping $50,000 a night in order to impress strangers whom he desperately wanted to impress and befriend. 
The alcohol exacerbated his issues, and it wasn't uncommon for him to call his parents at all hours of the night, cursing at them and making weird allegations. His brother told the Washington Post that he stopped checking his phone at night and made peace with the fact that one day he would probably wake up to the news that Larry had lost his life. Larry continued to act recklessly and was involved in many altercations, including in October 2014 when he was locked up after he allegedly cut a man with a broken bottle at a Miami hotel. People started noticing that his NFL career wasn't the only thing missing from his life. Everyone pretty much faded to black as Larry's personal struggles took over. Even Jay-Z reportedly told him, Poof, vamoose, son of a... Larry later told the Washington Post that Jay-Z sent him an email and told him he could no longer be a part of his life due to his frequent issues with the law. During a 2017 interview with the Washington Post, Larry stated he believes he suffers from chronic traumatic encephalopathy, better known as CTE. The degenerative brain disorder has affected athletes who experience repeated blows to the head, such as boxers and football players. The disease has been found in the brains of over 300 former NFL players, and it can only be confirmed after death. Charging the defendant, Aaron Hernandez, with murder. What say you, Madam Foreperson? Guilty of murder in the first degree. Madam Foreperson. Former New England Patriots tight end Aaron Hernandez, who had a history of erratic and explosive behavior, was convicted of first-degree murder in 2015 before hanging himself in his prison cell in 2017. Following his passing, Boston researchers confirmed the 27-year-old had the most severe case of CTE they had seen in a brain younger than 46 years old. Larry described some of his own symptoms as anxiety, paranoia, headaches that are triggered by bright lights or noise, and the occasional self-destructive impulses and thoughts that tell him to commit dangerous acts against others. He was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and suffers from memory loss. The passenger side mirror on his Porsche was smashed, and there were dents all over the rear of the vehicle. But Larry couldn't remember what caused any of the damage. There are also two full NFL seasons from his career that he can't even remember. He relies on video compilations and highlights footage to remind him of his glory days. His biggest fear is that by the time he turns 50, he won't even remember his own name. When friends ask him to hang out, he declines. He told the Washington Post, You kind of create your own prison. I've kind of barricaded myself in my surroundings with certain things that I could handle. Having his daughter in his life has proven to be a blessing. Larry said it's her presence that stops him from acting out. When she's with her mother, Larry is more likely to drink and slip into a dark place. In 2019, Larry was ready to clear up some rumors in an Instagram post. He wrote that he was never Jay-Z's roommate, and during the time everyone said they were shacking up in Trump Tower, Larry was actually living with a girlfriend. He also stated he couldn't care less about his friendship with Jay-Z and added, they going straight to hell for blaspheming. I pity them. In November 2022, Larry sat down with Jason Whitlock's YouTube channel and proclaimed that Beyonce and Jay-Z worship the devil and are being controlled by Satanism. He added, they are obviously not serving the same most high God that I am. That's what makes us enemies. I stand for a completely different truth. After Rock Nation signed Megan the Stallion, Megan posted on Twitter that losing her mother to cancer motivated her to continue chasing her dreams. Larry then chimed in by stating Megan sold her mom's soul for her success. When online users told Larry he was hating on Megan because he wanted to sleep with her, but he couldn't, Larry proceeded to post his hit list on Twitter, which included Julissa, Chili from TLC, Drea, and Maya. As of this video, he has blown through all of his money, but has just enough to get by and to pay for his daughter's tuition once she heads off to college. He sold his stake in a South Beach nightclub and reduced his intake of hard liquor. He moved out of a trendy high-rise in Miami and settled into a quiet townhouse in Fort Lauderdale. He got rid of his weapons and works at a nonprofit that uses the arts to mentor disadvantaged children. Larry also confirmed that he quit therapy and refuses to take his medication because his desire to prove his toughness is still at the forefront of his mind. He believes that at this point in his life, he's strong enough to manage his impulses on his own. 
NFL players face an increased risk for mental health challenges due to the repeated head injuries that are so common on the field. Sadly, the sport's masculine culture is a breeding ground for negative attitudes associated with mental health. Thankfully, there is support out there for anyone who is suffering in silence.